Welcome to Big Al's Do It Yourself. If you're one of those homeowners that has copper piping in their house and you're developing pinhole leaks, then this video is for you. If not, jump to the end of this video and I'll show you ways how you can protect your water lines in your house. So if you're ready to fix those pinhole leaks, find out what caused them and protect your pipes in the future moving forward, then let's get started. So in 1999, there were three common options for residential water lines. That was copper, PEX, uh, CPVC. So this, the house we're looking at today was built in 2000. So now 22 years later, it's developed pinhole leaks in the copper water lines. It's on county water, and I've been working with a homeowner to come up with a solution and a plan to manage this problem. So here's the questions. One, should the copper pipe be replaced with PEX or similar. It's very expensive and you will probably have to leave the home during replacement. Number two, should I just fix the leaks as they occur? Uh, if it's a small area and easy to monitor, then yes, that's certainly an option and a lot more uh, manageable financially. Number three, how can I monitor for pinhole leaks? So best way to do that is install some type of water monitoring system. We're going to talk about that a little bit further on in the video. So the owner had the water tested by the county water department and it showed a pH of uh, 9.12. It should be below 8. The water department says they will flush the hydrants in the area which should correct that high alkalinity. Uh, the owner also had the water pressure tested and it showed 125 PSI. And they don't know how long it's been that high but uh, they had the pressure reducing valve repaired and fixed that problem. Uh, and the repaired section of pipe in this house was manufactured by Cambridge Lee Industries in Pennsylvania. So we know that uh, it was good copper that was made in the USA and it wasn't an import issue. Because the three main causes of pitting corrosion in copper pipe are chemical or mechan mechanical damages due to the protective oxide coating inside the pipe, uh, wearing away either from high or low pH, sediment, hard metals, or minerals, which commonly can be found in well water or high water pressure can also damage that oxide coating in the pipe. Uh, localized damage to protective oxide film or poor application during manufacturing. Examples are uh, imported copper, which was really after the year 2000 to 2012, and poor installation, which too much flux, too many fittings, improper sizing, anything that increases turbulence inside of that copper pipe can lead to early failure. And number three, uh, non-uniformity in metals. Copper pipes and other type of metal pipes or connections used together. Copper touching another metal. That's an example of galvanic corrosion. Uh, research has also shown that copper pipe corrosion from contact with fiberglass insulation in commercial applications can also lead to pitting and corrosion. So we decided to do the repairs since the problem was somewhat isolated to one part of the house. Uh, we also installed a Streamlabs UFCW1000 uh, inline water monitoring system with real-time notification on changes in temperature, water pressure, flow changes, and also leak notifications. There are several different brands out there. Just look at the one that you like the best and uh, it'll give you peace of mind. All right, so let's get in here. Let me show you what the problem is and how we fixed it. Okay, so here we are in this three-story home uh, built in year 2000. We're down in the basement, and this is where one of the where the primary leak started on this house. Let me just get up here and show you what we found when we cut that sheetrock out. As you can see, we did the repair with uh, PEX and uh, shark bite connectors. You can use any type of push-on connector that you want, but this worked out really well. You can see that we went all the way back into here and ran it down through there. And we also added a gate valve there so we can shut it off if we need to do repairs further down without shutting off the system in the whole house. And if you'll see right there, you'll see some grounding on those pipes right there. We'll talk about that in just a minute. But we've got three issues going on here. One, the main water supply is about 20 feet that way. 
and there's a bunch of connections and elbows and turns just on the other side of that floor truss that probably added to the turbulence part. Number two is if you see that metal strapping right here for that floor truss, the original copper pipe was pressed up against this and here I have the pipe right here. You can see what it looks like. You can see all the pitting. And if you look right here, you can see where, where it's outlined in black, where that pipe was actually touching that metal strapping. And that was causing what's called galvanic corrosion two dissimilar metals touching and I do believe that's what led to all of this corrosion. That and the velocity of all the connectors down there and also the fact that the homeowner had for a period of time high water pressure due to the fact that uh, their water pressure reducer had stopped working. Their pressures were up to around 125 psi. So we're going to get down and we're going to look at this in more detail and talk about Galvanic corrosion versus electrolysis. Okay, so let's talk about this piece of copper pipe. Again, you can see where the uh, galvanic corrosion occurred between the copper touching that uh, galvanized metal plate on that floor truss. Did that indeed lead to all this corrosion in the pipe? And I'm gonna flip this over and hopefully you can actually see down in that pipe just how bad the corrosion is. Okay, so was this galvanic uh, corrosion or was this electrolysis? I'm just going to quickly uh, read you the definition here. So it's kind of confusing, but galvanic corrosion is caused when two dissimilar metals come in contact with, with each other. Okay, electrolysis is caused by the existence of potential current between two different objects. And you see that on boats a lot that are, are, are attached to a dock that has power running out to them. Okay, well you noticed earlier where I showed you how that copper was grounded really close to where all this occurred. So is this electrolysis or is it galvanic corrosion? I'm gonna guess and say because this is so discolored here and there's so much damage on either side, I'm gonna say it's a corrosion, galvanic corrosion. Okay, let's look at some other uh, areas that might be of concern causing uh, pinhole leaks from galvanic corrosion. If you look right up here, you will see where that half inch copper right there is touching or was touching that strapping plate. So we just insulated that with some rubber material to separate those two. But I can tell you, it already looks like it's caused a little bit of problem. If you look right there, and if you look right there, it's not much, but it's a little bit. You get back over into here, and you start going down the line there, and everything looks pristine. And you will see all the grounding on this copper. It does make you wonder about electrolysis, but everything looks good there. And let me show you one more spot. And right here, you can see where some of this half inch copper pipe was touching this uh, metal vent pipe. So we again, just isolated those two with this rubber sheet here to keep that from causing any problems. And the copper pipe looks really good. I don't see any issues there. So as a homeowner, you wanna know what can be done to decrease future pinhole leaks and to protect your copper pipes. So I've got five steps here that can help you monitor and reduce further damage to your copper pipes, or for that matter, any non-copper pipe and their fixtures. Okay, number one, if you're on well water, you need to filter your water for heavy metals, sediment, and balance the pH. Uh, you can check the pH really quickly and easy with just some of these uh, test strips right here. And if you find a discrepancy, if it's way up high, then you can contact uh, your water department. They can do a full annual test to make sure everything else looks good. The second thing you want to do is monitor your water pressure by keeping it between 40 and 60 PSI. Now we're currently hooked up to this house and it's showing, let's turn it this way, and it's showing 
about 62 PSI. So just a tad high, but we can adjust that. So that's number two. Number three, you want to inspect your plumbing for issues uh, with contact to dissimilar chemical structures. And that would be the definition of galvanic corrosion. And if you want your copper, and if your copper is a poor import quality, which occurred after the year 2000 through roughly 2012, you want to look for data printed on that pipe to see and confirm that it was made in America, okay? Also, I would consult a licensed electrician and have him inspect the electrical grounding, especially if they're using a copper pipe as part of the grounding in your home. That could be an issue with uh, electrolysis. A lot of times you'll see that right around the copper pipes on your water heater where there usually is a ground attached to it, okay? Uh, and then number five, for peace of mind, I would recommend that you install a smart home water term monitoring system such as this Streamlabs one that we installed in this house. It'll monitor for leaks and give you a lot of information that you can uh, monitor from your smartphone. Okay, that's it. That's gonna do it for this video. Remember, please like and subscribe. And remember, you can do it yourself. Until next time, this is Big Al.